Secure Digital Life ha is now joining you despite our lighting difficulties, which delayed us getting started. We have new lights, which are awesome, but they're also blinding and actually seem to have taken on their own gravity wells. Today, we're going to talk about basic network attacks because you requested it, so stick around. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm, so, I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> it's another day, it's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You oh, oh, you move my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. DerbyCon! DerbyCon is soon. It's the 20 to the 24th of September in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Paul and company are going to be there, so you should be there too. Uh, I think you, I don't know if you can get, actually I keep seeing people begging for tickets, offering to uh, fight to the death for tickets. Hell yeah. Uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So be sure and check it out if you get a chance to be in Louisville. We're going to be at B-Sides Connecticut on the 7th of October in Southington, Connecticut, wherever that is. I haven't looked it up yet, but uh, Southington. Oh, I'm getting, like, the voice in my head is telling me I'm mispronouncing it. It's, it's like actually pronounced throat warbler mangrove. But um, regardless of that, sorry, thank you, Monty Python, for that. Um, but uh, the Wild West Hackin' Fest in South Dakota and Deadwood, which I think I did pronounce, but maybe it's yeah. pronounced like Deadwood yeah. or something. Deadwood. Um, Deadwood yeah. is, uh, is going to be the 27th, 29th of October. We'll be there as well. So be sure and get tickets for those things if you have not already and get your lodging because if you're going to stay in Deadwood, you're going to have some real problems. Lodging or logging? Logging. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Logging, lodging, whatever. <laughs> Ross is with me today. <laughs> so uh, as you can see from uh, all of his uh, acerbic comments. Oh, uh, acerbic. Oh, but uh, anyway. So, whatever. But we're going to talk about basic networking attacks today. And uh, cool. several people requested that uh, through uh, online. And so, feel free if you have topics you want to see yeah. to be sure and send we're them in. Live if you have streaming questions, feeds. So. Live streaming feeds. Yeah. You can actually get answer. in on the Ask. action. And yeah. we, you can answer. But if you have stuff you want to know about, tell us and we'll talk about it. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about Wireshark. Again, you requested it, so you're going to get it. Uh, but uh, today, we're going to talk about some basic network attacks. Sure. So, uh, I, I looked up. Uh, just uh, to see what uh, what the most common I, I could have guessed, and I went ahead and looked like the FBI site to see what their most reported one was. You want to guess? Was it DDoS? Of course. Yeah. I mean, the most common kind of attack that people report is a denial of service attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the basic types of denial of service first. And then we'll talk about some other types of attacks that you see uh, on the network. Basically, uh, denial of service has been around as, uh, forever. I mean, I remember like both writing and seeing denial of service attacks back in like the late 90s. So this was really early in the internet. I ran a denial of service attack against a guy named Spock. You know who you are if you're out there. Spock, you pathetic loser. It was in like 1997. And, uh, and the guy was like, probing my networks, and I wrote a, a C-based uh, denial of service attack uh, to run against him, mm -hmm. which basically just, uh, I, I had to, you had actually had to roll your own packets back then. There was no uh, pre-generated appies or anything. <laughs> you had to, you literally had to sit down and code up your own buffers and stuff them with fun stuff, and I stuffed mine with, each packet had one ASCII character in it that spelled out well, I can't say that. It's a F U. <laughs> <laughs> fun. And some more it's stuff. Fun. Yeah. It's spelled fun. Right. It's yeah. fudge you is what it slowly spelled out in, in this in this PG rated show. But that that was a, a denial of service. So, so we'll talk a little bit about what uh, denial of service attack. Have you have you ever dealt with denial of service attacks? I mean I have. People you know it, I mean one of the ways that, you know, common ha even script kitties is the easiest way to shut down DNS so that people right. can just go right in and do their thing. So 
Well, I mean, you'll, you'll see these attacks being generated, and there's lots of different ways. To, and like next week, we're going to talk about InMap, which is a very famous product. Yeah. And InMap is, is, is a way to generate attacks. That's not what it's meant for, <laughs> supposedly. But you can generate attacks with it. Um, one of the original types of attacks is called a SYN flood. So uh, a type of TCP packet is called a SYN, a yep. SYN packet. Yep. And SYN packets both re they, uh, request a connection. Mm -hmm. So I send you a request that says, please respond, and then you reply. And so that reply also generates traffic. But the idea of the denial of service attack is basically to create enough traffic that either my device shuts down, yep. which is very hard to do anymore, or uh, that it, it causes uh, a delay. So, it, and, and I'll use Amazon because I don't know if you could even ever possibly do this to Amazon. But if, if, you, could, if you could generate enough traffic to Amazon to cause people not to be able to shop, it could have a negative impact on, yeah. on Amazon. It could cause a lot of la network latency. People couldn't get, you know, check out or whatever. Yeah. Right. So you used to see people doing this to cover hacks. Mm -hmm. So people are trying to break into you, and they don't want you to pay attention to it. So the, the, like a sin flood would generate tons of log traffic, maybe, and it would also then disguise what someone was doing. And, and that's primarily what it's used for today. I mean, yeah. Either that or... or Pathetic vengeance, and you will see people taking vengeance on low-end web servers this yeah. way. It's like like I explained to my students on an entry level. If you go into a post office and you have, I mean, if anyone ever does that anymore, and you have, you know, one letter, the the postmaster has to stamp it and then sends it out, right? But if you show up with ten thousand letters at once, they have to stamp one, send it, stamp one, send it right. each time. The more that you show up with, the more the le more the length of time uh, right. that the people in back of you have to wait to get to the next uh, person right. or to the next thing. And so. and and so those. Those types of attacks were, were widely used, especially in the early internet days. So this was almost a kind of early trolling uh, yeah. approach, was that you, somebody makes you mad, somebody you don't like, and people would set up and run attacks. Now, SAN attacks are very dangerous attacks to run against someone because they can be traced, because they're going to have a source IP address on them of you. And that would be very, very problematic, mm -hmm. especially today. Now, remember, today, in the United States, running these attacks is ill illegal at the federal level. They can prosecute you for doing this. We've talked about some of those acts uh, that came up. We were talking to Congressman Langevin a couple of weeks ago and all this kind of stuff, some of which is, is you know, hackbacks or, or, or targeting. And that's what I was doing back in the 90s, which was theoretically kind of illegal. I was letting Spock and and I'm letting Spock know that I saw him and I did not appreciate what he's doing. So we used to call it firing a shot across somebody's bow. Mm -hmm. And you're just sort of saying, I see you. Go away. You pathetic loser. Like, is this all you've got to do? But uh, today, this is actually a, a fiduciary harm, my favorite term. Yeah. And when, when somebody can show fiduciary harm, that's when the lawyers start to get all sweaty because yep. they hear money and they get worked up about it. Other types of these things are things like act floods. Mm -hmm. An act flood flood is just the same thing, essentially, except now instead of sending you send traffic, I'm sending you acts, and each act actually gets another packet back. So again, I'm just trying to slow down your server. You can do this with any kind of packet. So they do it with acts, they do it with fins, uh, and then, of course, there's the infamous ping flood. And pings are ICMP traffic, so if, yep. if you're using a, a ping packet, you're getting ICMP uh, inbound and it requests a reply so you're actually flooding both mm -hmm. the the device and you're flooding the network with traffic and again the idea is usually either uh, to, to cause problems, or it's to disguise other activities. So if you flood my logs, and I've got 100 million lines of log entries because I foolishly was logging ping traffic, uh, then you may be able to be doing other things in and around, and I'm trying to scan through thousands and thousands of pages of log entries. Now, if I have good stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate all that crap, and I'm only going to see those log entries that really, really matter, which is that other stuff that, that you're doing. So mm -hmm. those are all like basic uh, denial of service type attacks that you're going to see running pretty much uh, all the time. I mean, you'll see these kind of attacks being run against you just <laughs> almost continually. If, if I go down to my, my networks and pull them, I'm going to see tons of those things. And that leads you to then distributed denial of service. So this is called DDoS. Mm -hmm. And distributed denial of service attacks were a, a sort of extrapolate or, or an escalation, not extrapolation, an escalation of those original D, uh, DOS attacks because as firewalls, routers, and servers became more robust, mm -hmm. a, a straight-up denial-of-service attack was no longer going to cut it. As it became illegal, it was no longer going to cut it. So all of a sudden, people needed, one, a way to disguise the attack, and two, a way to generate massive amounts of traffic to come and hit you at the same time. And so those DDoS attacks now today are run by botnets. Yep. Zombies. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you'll see big botnets, and, and this is a, a, a source of phishing. Uh, phishing sometimes is just for this kind of malware. It's not something very particular. They're going to go in and they're going to inject uh, botnets that are going to be used then to run uh, denial of service at some future date. So these, these are just demons that sit there listening. And so the listening demons wait on a certain port, and at some point I trigger them either with a, with a text string or something I send out across the entire Internet, or they just literally count down to a day. So we've seen attacks that ran on certain days, like the 5th of November is a popular one. Uh, there was some famous ones oh, on yeah. uh, Michelangelo's birthday was one that they ran a very famous uh, denial of service attack. So you'll see people today <laughs> expanding these attacks so that they hit some target at a specific time. Uh, a Smurf attack is is a famous one. Do you do you know? Uh, you, you, you go know. for it. Okay, it's all you. Um, Smurf attacks were, were very, very famous uh, way to do this, and it was mostly done by coders. So if I want to Smurf you, <laughs> I, he knew I was going to say Smurf you that. in the Smurf. Yeah, Smurf you in the Smurf. Yeah, Smurfed in the Smurf. But um, basically a Smurf attack was where I rig my packets. So now the traffic I'm generating, I actually send my traffic somewhere else and I put the source address in my packet as being from the victim. Mm. So I put whatever the victim is going to be in as the source on the packet. So I write my code, and I build that up. And then the replies, so all those, all those pieces yeah. of traffic, I send them out all over the world, and all the attacks then come from everywhere all at once. I mean, even including you know, Amazon and CNN and all these sites are getting pinged. The, the replies all go back to the source, and that's called a, that's called a smurf attack. Or, or sometimes also called a zombie smurf attack because if you do it with a botnet or you do it with malware it's just triggered and all I have to do is sit in my little lair and I send this massive burst out across the world and all those replies come swooping in at once and hit you just like bang so why don't people just turn off ICMP re re like response well they do yeah I mean it's very common to see people turn ICMP re re response off at the firewall now you can still trigger a denial of service attack then by just the fact that it has to deny all that right. traffic right. but you'll over the years, you've seen more and more people blocking all inbound ICMP traffic so that they don't get ping attacked. But I can do the exact same thing by using send packets. So I can do this same exact attack using a send packet or an a And the reason they use Axe is because almost nobody blocks Axe because they, they need to get Axe. So and, and acts are often coming from unknown sources. So if you have yeah. yeah, if you have users and they're using say websites, mm -hmm. those website every single packet gets an ACK back. So people don't block those at the firewall, and that means all of a sudden that an ACK attack works. The other one I, uh, that I mentioned in the show notes is a fin, and a fin packet is sent at the end. If you have a really good piece yep. of code. Uh, a fin packet is sent to close the connection, yep. and again, almost nobody blocks fin packets. And then there's other, there, you know, there, there's a 8-bit field in the packet for flags, mm -hmm. and you can set any flag or any combination of flags and make new flags. And all those things are things people try to get traffic through uh, to get p traffic through the firewall, and all those then can be the source. But yeah, I mean, blocking things is why this is why people do block things. And most firewalls today are very robust. But I will tell you uh, uh, about a special type of attack that I just can't help myself to mentioning it. It's called the ping of death. We have to talk. The beauty. The dreaded ping of death. It doesn't work anymore, so don't get all sweaty. Um, back in the early days of the internet, uh, there was uh, people started experimenting with all these types of traffic. And most people who've used the ping command, and you have ping available to you on Windows, on Linux, or whatever you're using, most people who've used the ping command don't know that it has a whole bunch of switches with it. So you can actually uh, jump in there and get uh, a switch set, the, the L switch. So if you say minus L, it stands for length. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, the girth switch doesn't work anymore, but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the length switch, minus L, allows you to say how many bytes are attached to that ping. And it's an 8-bit field. And what people did was they put 256 yep. in the field, and 256 is bigger than an 8-bit number. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, guess what happened? It actually caused like <laughs> every piece of network uh, equipment all the way around because the world. Because they didn't know how to handle the packet. Yeah. We, I was there, and we didn't know what was going on. I mean, I remember sitting there and watching my borders go down, and they would literally crash and reboot. And I was like, what is this? And then you bring it back up, and it would crash again. And it took weeks and weeks till somebody figured out what it was and then actually put out patches for it. 
And I was calling like you know, Cisco and I was calling these places going, what is going on? Does anybody have a clue what this is? And we, we started sniffing traffic like live in front of our firewalls trying to figure out what it was. And we saw these pings, but we didn't know. I, I, I did catch it because you literally had to dig into it and figure out there was 256 bytes in it. It was essentially a malformed packet attack is what the, they would call that today. Uh, but, but, but denial of services can take all those kinds of forms, and the basic objective is to shut you down. So they want to keep you from broadcasting, they want to keep you from selling, they want to keep you from, or just be annoying, and they don't like you, and they, you'll see them do this. Uh, this is kind of faded from view. I mean, it's still out there, but you don't see as much attack like this uh, today. Uh, other stuff I listed were like opportunistic type attacks. Uh, and, and we're just covering like basic network stuff here. Uh, but opportunistic attacks, so my first one I listed was a teardrop attack because it's a good example of, of the type of network attacks that you've seen people do. Teardrop's a lot like ping of death, not in how it works, but in, in what it is. It was just somebody taking advantage of the structure of TCP. So what they did was they went in and looked, and there's a, there's a setting in TCP called fragmentation. And what fragmentation does is it decides how much I'm going to divide up my traffic in the packet forms. And what they did was they rigged it so that the packets overlap. So when, the, when the, the stack tries to put the packets back together into a whole web page, there's overlapping pieces of the traffic. Mm. And what that did was it causes the servers to crash. It caused all kinds of things to crash. And so teardrops were another type of, of basic attack that was used. It's kind of like a denial of service or a ping of death, but it was really often used to disguise stuff. Because if people can cause your firewall to crash, guess what companies did? They paid people to do, to do their competitors. Well, but but the, the first thing you have to do. I mean, I mean, you, you, you do tons of support. I, Russ does this all the time. You see, you see him sitting there, he's supporting people. W when, when everything's down, what's the first thing you want to do? What's, what's the CEO say? Get us back online! Oh, well, yeah, of course, yeah. So you get them back online, and what they tend to do is fail open. Uh. So if I can crash your firewall, and the ASA is, is choking, or, or whatever kind of firewall you have, is, is, it keeps dying, you might do something really naive and say, okay, we just got to get back online. The CEO's screaming at me. His yep. porn's not streaming. What am <laughs> I going to do? And you jump in and say, just, just turn it wide open until yep. we figure this out, and we'll start monitoring it. Yep. And, and people do things like that. And then uh, while that's happening, then an exfilation at attack happens where they attack your server because they know you've got something they want to get to. And these, I mean, these are fairly sophisticated kind of attack vectors mm -hmm. now because now you're not just talking about a bunch of kids sitting around in a room or just messing with people. You're talking about people who truly want to hack something, nation states, uh, hacking groups that are very organized and coordinated. Uh, <laughs> You know, people that are like cyber terrorist type people and that kind of thing. Uh, but but te teardrop attacks were like that. They were very specialized kind of attacks that they don't, I don't, they mostly don't work anymore. But you still, you will see people trying to build malformed attacks uh, that come up. Uh, another type of basic network attack then is a scan. And scans are very annoying, and they look a lot like denial of service attacks. Mm -hmm. And like I said, next week we're going to talk about InMap, which is a very famous uh, product that has been around for a long, long time and, and evolved from this product called Satan. And Satan, uh, and I've got the books. I'm going to bring the book. Uh, I've got the original Satan Administrator's Manual. <laughs> uh, Satan stood for System Administrator's Tool for Administering Networks. And it was a, it was a very powerful appy that somebody wrote and put out there. And basically what happened was InMap is a derivative. It uses a Satan engine. It uses that as a way to push things. But what scanning does is, is we go look at open ports. Yeah. It's like walking into a building and knocking on doors and seeing It's exactly there like that. Or... In fact, the example I always use for that is if you go up to an apartment building and you want to get in and you just push all the buzzers. Yeah, and, buzzes, you know, somebody's yeah. waiting on Chinese food and says, yeah, yeah okay, let them in. And, and then you get in the building that way. And, and I probably most of us who have, have been around have done that at some point in our, our lives. Like, I don't remember. I, I, I'm just going to go up there and surprise them. And it's like, Ugh. And that's what a scan really is like. And it's usually a stage and collection of data are preliminary to a network type attack attack, but you'll see people go out and run a scan, and uh, if you watch your logs, you'll see a scan sometimes of just every IP address, and they will scan sometimes a very specific thing, yep. so you'll see them scanning for port whatever, yep. 1039 yep. is a common one, uh, 443, all those ports that we know about, uh, like server message block uh, on 443 is a really common one to scan, TCP, UDP, there's six, if you don't remember, 
65,535, that's how many ports there are. So you'll see people scanning from 1 to 65,535 because they're trying to actually look at every single port to see if it's open. And you can send a send packet to it and see if it replies. You can send acts to it and see if it sends back a... a and then if you get a reply, you can always tell net in or see how that works. I, so. I always use fins because yeah. uh, fins part of the protocol. And if you send a fin, you'll get a fin act back. And there's no log entry for it because it's closing a port rather than open. It's called a stealth scan. And, and you'll see those kind of things uh, out there. The next one. So the next type of attack that is out there is called a brute force. Mm -hmm. And a brute force attack is where basically what's happening is someone's trying to crack passwords. And this is the second, in the FBI list, this was the second uh, most common kind of thing that you were seeing. And this is basically people first scanning. So they go out and they use InMap or something and they look for a, uh, an open port like port uh, 22, port 23, port 25, mm -hmm. port 21. So that's FTP, S SSH, Telnet, and SMTP, SMTP yeah. uh, traffic. And they're looking for those things. They all have logins and passwords. So they want to jump in there and say, okay, I'm going to go hit those ports, and I'm just going to try every possible password. If you have good firewalling, it will shun those IPs after a while so that the brute forces are slowed down to the point that it would take longer than the expected lifespan of the universe to actually ach achieve the task. Unless, of course, your passwords are stuff like 777 or, or you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, PITA was one we got once that, that stood for pain in the, yeah, yeah. that, yeah. Which was funny. Uh, the last one then, uh, as we, we start to run out of time, uh, we could go on about this for days, I'm sure, and we'll do some more shows on it later, but uh, there are zero days. And so zero days and exploits are essentially, you know, this is sort of this hacker gold kind of uh, model where we're actually finding something that is an actual exploit. So someone realizes that if instead of putting, you know, a password in the password field, you put one equals one. And... I am just making something up, but you put one equals one in the password field and it lets you in without a password. Mm -hmm. That's called a, an exploit. And when those kind of exploits come about, those are used to attack your networks. And, and if there are known exploits for your devices, so if you're running some kind of antique firewall or you've got a home rolled one, and we've seen those, somebody builds their own setup and they put it all together and it's got all kinds of problems and they've never updated it. One of the most uh, notorious targets was Bin D, which is a, which is a DNS server. And, and People don't update them, and they're sitting out there rolling. We've seen this over and over this year, in fact. So much of this, uh, the, the uh, crypto locker, malware, want to cry, all these things relied on you not updating stuff. But again, all that starts with these basic network attacks. So you're going to see that, that vector develop. So what it is, is you'll see something like a denial of service that gets you distracted. While the denial of service is running, they scan you. Because now that's mixed into this massive pile of stuff. So it didn't stop you from operating, but the denial of service disguised the in-map scan of your entire network. So it was just, you know, every little bit there was one of those going through. That's backed up by brute force attacks or zero days or exploits. And when all that comes together, they may have gotten in. Now, if these are really nasty, that's going to be something you don't know they got there. They're not going to come in and deface your website and put up, huh, owned by Wolverine, kind of lame stuff that you see people do. They're going to come in and they're going to embed malware in your systems. They're going to use that later. They may come after you two years from now. Uh, they may be going to target you for some other reason, or they're going to use you as a zombie for a zombie attack on somebody else, and they use your platform to attack the White House or whoever it is they want to go after. And that way, when all those traces come back, it's all back to your network. Do you have other attacks you want to bring no, up? No, which brings us to the zombie, the whole idea of the botnets, and which happened now with IoT and right. why it's so important that IoT devices are, are the security of IoT devices are Ab paramount. So. Absolutely, and, and, and we've seen those recently. Yeah. So because zombie, uh, IoT is so prevalent now and there's so much of it, and you know, I, I keep talking about my little <laughs> swirling network of bots floating around me to protect me or protect my kid, business idea, you owe me. Um, if you if you build it, but if you had your you know as as that grows and we have pacemaker, I saw the other day that pacemakers you know yeah. had all these vulnerabilities in them. As that stuff grows, the potential for those things to become infected with malware and become zombies, so that they could run huge de denial of service attacks or whatever, 
really do become much more prevalent. And then there are endless numbers of attacks we could go into, like man-in-the-middle attack, SSL-type uh, attacks where you're trying to break keys, you're trying to break crypto, you're trying to intercept messages as they, as they come out and, and go out in the world. And, and literally, you know, obviously we teach whole courses on this, so uh, there's a lot more to it than just a 25-minute show. Right. But, but the truth is, is that these are really critical things to learn about, even if you're just a home user, because at home you are targeted by these things as well, and you're much more vulnerable to these low-end ones, because someone could denial of service attack your house and and really hammer you, and you may not have the type of enterprise-level equipment that could withstand that sort of an assault. Now, I don't know why they're doing that to you, but you've you, you've used the internet. Uh, you know that you posted that Facebook comment about, wow, look at that dress she's wearing. And then the person goes out and downloads a whole bunch of denial of service software and says, okay, we're taking them out. It's mm -hmm. going to be the end. I know what their home IP is. Protect your home IP addresses. Protect your phone IP addresses. All those kind of things. Anyway, whew, that was a lot of stuff in a very short period of time. We can talk about this more. So if you have questions or comments, be sure and put them on the, on the website. And we'll be happy to answer your questions or do more shows about things you want to hear about. Thanks, Russ. Take care. Thank you very okay. much, everyone. See you next time.